the forthcoming opponent. Oh, you mean the big ugly bear. <laughs> That fella's too ugly to be the world's heavyweight champ. <laughs> I'm not lying, he's too ugly. The world heavyweight champion should be pretty, like me. <laughs> I'm as pretty as you, and you're not a fighter. <laughs> oh, you got me beat. There's no problem there. The round is round eight. If, th if that's what you're talking about, I have predicted round eight to prove that I'm great. All right. If he makes me sore, I'll get him like more. Oh, yeah. oh, that's pretty wild. It's good to see you looking really great. I'm glad to be here. You are? I'm getting old now. Do yeah. <laughs> you feel old? Yeah, I feel like I'm about, about 73 your age. Do you? <laughs> no. I feel pretty good. You do. I tell you why I said it's, it's good to see you looking good, because, as you know, there's been a lot of speculation about your condition after the Holmes fight, particularly in this country. There was a suggestion, for instance, that there was brain damage. Well, I tell you what, <laughs> uh, your brain control what comes out of your mouth. And during this interview, you check me out, and after, you tell me if I have brain damage. I'll let you know at the end of the interview, shall I? I went to a place called Mayo Clinic. It's the world's best cli clinic. And there were reports about me of brain trouble, kidney trouble, and speech defects, so, I went to Mayo Clinic and got a physical. Stayed there about two days. And we have 100% checkout. So all of these local doctors and one horse town doctors can pack up because I got okay from the best clinic in the world. You hope not? It has affected your movement. It has affected your speech. It has affected your facial expression, but it is not affected your mental capacity. Does it bother you when you hear people say, as they do, Muhammad Ali's punch drunk? No. I didn't drink that much. Does it bother you when people say, no. you know, you should have gotten out earlier, you're no. sick as no. a result of the punches? Don't worry. If I thought five thousand for dear, I wouldn't come on the show. You wouldn't come on here? No. Because I'd be worried about what you were asking. When you look at the old pictures of the fast talking, fast moving. You show me a picture of me. <laughs> you show me a picture of you and myself. And we look much younger then. Things, things change. Does your present condition upset you? Does it bother you? Uh, only a trial, trial for my law. God tries in wealth, tries in pain. Charging and failure, whatever. So, I don't know what he's in the store. You view this as your trial, then? Yes. How are you passing it? This is as old. Are you matching the trial? You up to the challenger? I'm doing it right now. Coming on your show. Facing you. Make it yeah. sound so hard to do. And I started not to come. Why? Of uh, course, I realize I'm not healthy like I was. I realize you'll ask questions like this. And, but my pride would make me say no. But uh, in the Holy Quran, it says if you got one ounce of pride, you can't enter paradise. So it scares me to think that I'm too proud to do your show because of my condition. I'm not a racist. The only thing about it is that uh, Muhammad Ali can jump around and say I'm a black militant and I'm not going to let any white boy whip me and all of that. And it's fine for him to do whatever he wants to, but the minute I yell out uh, black conspiracy, I'm a racist. Mm. And I think that uh, it's become time that the white man stand up, should stand up for his grounds, you know, because stand up for himself and be proud of himself as a white man. I'm, di I'm being discriminated against now. They the black people whom I have nothing against, uh, I feel any man that wants the equal rights should work an equal amount of time to deserve equal rights. Well, you're saying we've reached a position now in sports in particular where there's discrimination in reverse? Huh? I certainly am beginning to think so. But he also gave his mind. A by a Jerry Quarry. This is Jerry Quarry today. 
How do you feel these days, Jerry? I, I feel, fish, I feature myself, but it, it's a little old, you know. You feel old? Yeah, I feel like an old man. Jerry is only 50 years old. He lives with his brother James. He loves Coca-Cola. Because he can't take care of himself anymore. Ice cream. Ice cream. The old name is called the punch drunk fighter. The medical name for it is dementia pugilistica, and it's the price many young fighters pay for years of doing this. <laughs> He's simply taken too many, too many shots to the head. It wasn't any one particular fight. It was a combination of over the years of taking punches to the head. Imagine two decades of your head being knocked around with this kind of force. And you can understand why Jerry Quarry can barely remember the biggest moments of his life. You remember what they called you? I don't remember that. The Great White Hope. Oh, I remember that, yeah. Irish Jerry Quarry. He still has a couple of moves. <laughs> That's it. Uh, I quit. <laughs> 231.6 pounds for the undefeated champion. Magomed Abdus Salamov. Killer. Он ему не помешает сейчас. Досрочная победа была бы на руку кубинцу, чтобы не было ни у кого никаких вопросов. Переса там тоже серьезная травма под правым глазом гематома. На пропускал он будет здоров. Да, похоже, не осталось особо сил у Майкла Переса, чтобы развить свою атаку и, называется, добить соперника. Рефери тут даже немножко помогает, на мой взгляд, дагестанцу. Последние секунды. Кто будет вырывать концовку? Оба не решаются на атаку, но решился все-таки Абдусаламов и попал. Хорошая двойка от Abdul Salamov lost a bloody 10-round bout to Mike Perez at Madison Square Garden. After the fight, New York State Athletic Commission doctors stitched a gash above his eye, examined an apparent broken bone in his face, and gave him a neurological test. What they didn't diagnose was a potentially fatal brain injury. And despite having an ambulance at their disposal, the doctors didn't send him to the hospital. Abdul Salamov's cornermen had to take him there by taxi, where emergency surgery saved his life. But the damage to his brain was already done. Maga, now everything, no matter how small, requires help. When his two oldest daughters, ages nine and six, are off to school, Abdul Salamov's wife, Bakanai, is by his side performing the daily tasks he used to do himself. He's like a little child, my little boy. I have to teach him to walk and talk and eat. I have to teach him like I teach our youngest daughter. He's very dependent on me. Open, 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 nice. 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 Open, 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 nice.